This is my CZ Bren 2 MS that I just picked up. This particular variant is chambered in 5.56 and has a 14 inch barrel. The great thing about the 14 inch barrel variants is that you can permanently affix uh, a muzzle device to them and it brings the overall barrel length to 16 inches and you can throw a stock on it without having to file a form one and turn it into an SBR. So that's what I have planned for this. And in addition to that, I'm gonna be doing some ergonomic and controls upgrades. I'll be doing trigger work and getting into the trigger mechanism. And I will also be doing gas system upgrades as well. Do the job, but go! Do it now! This is a factory gas regulator and piston assembly. You can see it's marked there for the 11 and 14 inch barrel variants. Position one, straight up, corresponds to this hole. That's your, um, normal operating condition hole. Uh, position two is adverse conditions. The hole is a bit bigger and then position uh, zero would turn your gas off. Um, so they really don't have a provision for a low gas setting for extremely high pressure ammunition or suppressor use. I got the HBI gas regulator and uh, piston assembly and I got their high load uh, gas piston spring. This guy right here, uh, position one, two, and three, the markings will be in the 12 o'clock position and those correspond to these holes on the bottom side. We have the first hole, which is really small. That will be for suppressor and, and um, hot ammo use. Uh, number two is gonna be the normal um, gas port. And number three is gonna be adverse condition. And also this will probably work pretty well with my super light 223 steel case range ammo that I have a whole bunch of. The factory handguard on this gun is hilariously small. It only has three M lock slots. Um, this is, you know, the same handguard that comes on the 8, 11, and 14 inch barrel models. I would argue it's even too short for the uh, 8 inch barrel models. Um, it gets really hot really quick because um, it's so small and it's aluminum and it's also dangerously close to the extremely hot. Uh, gas block up here and it's pretty easy for your hand to uh, slip up there and, and make contact with that. Um, there's just no real estate for accessories in terms of uh, lights, pressure pads, uh, QD sockets if you don't want to use these sling attachment types right here on this plate. Also this is uh, very short so when shooting this in a rifle configuration um, it doesn't allow you to get your support hand out very far for more stability. So going to install my HB Industries handguard here, which I'll show in a moment, but um, you have to punch this roll pin out and take this bayonet lug off and um, it stays off because the handguard goes over that section of the barrel. But to get this off, you can't have a muzzle device on it. So luckily I hadn't welded that flash hider on yet. Um, and if I had, I totally would have been screwed or would have probably just had to just uh, hack this or grind it off or at least grind this lower part of it off. So uh, that was a, I got lucky, but it's also a good reminder to check instructions for all your parts to, to make sure you're not gonna screw yourself. This HB Industries handguard is so nice. Um, it's lighter than the factory handguard at this 10.8 inches or whatever. You can see there's access uh, to your gas regulator there. You obviously put your uh, factory front sight back on it. It's got two mounting plates. The mounting of it is a heck of a lot more simple than the factory handguard. And on this side, I'm running the QD plate that they uh, include. And this side has the blank plate, which they include. Um, machining fit, finish quality, all that sort of stuff is awesome. Uh, I opted for the model with the optional scout light mounts up here rather than another M-Lock slot. I really like the BCM M-Lock uh, grip panels and also uh, their angled hand stop is one of my favorites. I pretty much run this setup on uh, all my rifles. 
The factory muzzle device here is just a three prong flash hider. The muzzle is threaded half by 28, which is great. That's the standard thread for 223 and 556 barrels, at least here in the United States. If you wanted to pin and weld a muzzle device onto this to get the 14 inch barrel to 16 inches, you need to change this muzzle device out. I measured from the bolt face to the end of this muzzle device and it's 15 and three quarter inches. So that means you have to swap the muzzle device out if you want to pin and weld something to it to get to that 16 inch length. For my muzzle device, I decided to go with the Sons of Liberty Gunworks Knox 556. This is their neutral configuration one that has um, ports at uh, 3, 12 and nine o'clock. It's essentially, you know, a dead air key mount compatible three prong flash hider with some ports around the circumference for muzzle brake and compensation action. Um, so uh, I've heard really good things about these. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be great. So I'm just going to go full send, weld it to my muzzle and be done with it. Well, that guy's all set to go. Uh, the overall length from the bolt face to the end of this muzzle device is now 16 and 7 sixteenths of an inch. One thing I did not know about this firearm, this rear cap right here, is actually uh, threaded for a standard mil-spec AR buffer tube. So um, if you registered this as an SBR or you know permanently made the barrel 16 inches overall length, you can go ahead and throw a mil-spec buffer tube in here with a standard retaining plate and castle nut and then throw your favorite um, you know, mil spec style buttstock on it. Now that I have a muzzle device permanently affixed to the end of the barrel, I can legally uh, throw this stock on here. So this is a factory brand two stock. This is a factory CZ UB part. I found it at uh, vz58usa.com. It was the only one I could find stateside. I paid 250 bucks for it, which is about what I expected. Um, it is three position collapsible. And I have pretty long arms, but at all all the way out, the stock is the correct length of pull for me. So that's very nice. Um, of course, it is right side folding. And you can fire it like this. And it hooks under the uh, shell deflector right here. Now, if you extend the stock, it gives you a little bit more room. But it does kind of get in the way of the uh, trigger guard there. But... It's not too bad at all. So, um, pretty pleased with this. I definitely, you know, wanted the uh, the factory stock and, and to have the the factory uh, look of the firearm once I uh, configured it as a rifle, and I didn't want to use an AR buffer tube and an AR style stock. Pretty immediately, I was impressed with the trigger. Uh, it's a two stage trigger. I figured it would be single stage like an AR. There's your take up. It's smooth, it's light, there's a defined wall, and then a little bit of creep and a crisp break. There is a lot of over travel. And the reset is long because there's so much over travel, but it's smooth, audible, and tactile. And now I'm gonna control the trigger here to the break with my other hand. And then now watch all this over travel. There's a lot. But other than that, the trigger feels uh, really good. I was pleasantly surprised. So get some trigger pull readings here. Uh, just a hair under four pounds. Hair under four pounds. Almost three and three quarter pounds. So that's what we're starting out with on this gun in terms of the trigger. The way you take this down is the same as the CZ Scorpion. You pull this front pin and then pull this down and out the front and there's your whole uh, trigger pack, uh, trigger group, fire control, uh, pistol grip. I kind of wish that was a separate piece. That'd be nice. Um, it has removable back straps, but it didn't come with any others. So that's kind of stupid. This is the Haga or Haga Defense uh, Enhanced Backstrap for this gun. It really improves the feel of the pistol grip. It fills out a larger hand uh, much nicer and it uh, increases trigger reach slightly. Uh, I paid 40 bucks for it, seems a little expensive, but uh, it's nice. I wish it was a little bit more textured, but then again, I can always stipple it myself. 
Um, it feels a lot better and is quite a bit larger than the factory one that comes with the gun, which is labeled S, presumably for small, and they do not include any of these back straps with the firearm when you purchase it. You just get the one, but there's the difference in profile right there. Uh, I did find a CZ Factory medium back strap uh, from some dealer in like Lithuania or Estonia. It was 13 bucks plus $15 shipping and handling. I don't even know when or if it will even get here. Um, so I'm not going to include it in this video, but uh, when it gets here, I'll see which one I like better um, and go with that. I haven't seen a video that um, kind of shows the, the inner workings of the trigger system on this. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. Um, this is your trigger right here. Here's your disconnector, that little hook. And then it has a coil spring under it. This is your trigger return spring. Goes around the pin here and here, down around the front of the trigger, and then these legs are on the bottom of the receiver. There is a trigger pin retaining clip that clips into a groove on this pin, the hammer pin, and then it goes through a hole in the, uh, the trigger pin. This hammer spring mechanism is kind of interesting. Uh, it has a uh, fulcrum right here that is um, off axis of the uh, pivot pin. And you can see there as I move it, it pushes this uh, push rod and spring back. And then it just works like a typical uh, two stage trigger uh, in an AR or something. Um, this rod right here uh, obviously guides this uh, this uh, spring rod right here, and then this is the uh, spring that puts pressure on this little hook right here, which is what engages with the notches on your safety selector. So I don't know if you can see that little lever moving in and out of the notches on the safety selector there. Um, this spring is what puts tension on that. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Of course, we got our Ambi Mag release, so. Mag release there, mag release there, just like an AR. Paddle uh, bolt catch bolt release, just like an AR, but then the bolt release is attached to this little slider that comes up into your trigger guard. So when the bolt's latched, you push this down, and when you want to lock the bolt to the rear, you can push it up and do that. Got my trigger pack torn apart here, and I'm replacing the factory trigger with this HBI trigger. You can see it has a nice stop right here to... Uh, limit over travel, so that'll be a nice improvement. I believe it um, takes out some uh, pre-travel as well. Uh, and of course, while I was in here, I just went ahead and um, shinied up some spots. This is the hammer hook on the top side, the hammer hook on the bottom side. I took down some high spots there, took down high spots on the, the edges and whatnot. Um, these are all metal injection molded parts. This is the disconnector, and I polished that face of it. And the underside of it where it um, grabs the hammer. And then uh, same thing. This is the leg where the uh, trigger hook grabs. This is where the disconnector hook grabs. Kind of got those shinied up. Shinied this up right here that interfaces with the top side of the disconnector. So just, you know, kind of cleaned everything up in here and, and smoothed everything out. HB Industries uh, supplies a slave pin for <laughs> reassembling this, thank God. Um, the trigger, this little trigger hook housing and the disconnector, disconnector spring and trigger return spring are all housed on this one pin. I like flat triggers. I like them with a little hook on the bottom. So this is sweet, really nice profile on it. I feel like there's a little bit less take up, but main thing is, is there's almost no over travel. So that's feeling really good. Let's see if it affected trigger pull weight at all. Since it's a flat trigger, you can crowd your finger towards the bottom. Ooh, yeah, two and three quarter pounds. Two and three quarter pounds. Two and three quarter pounds. Man, that is freaking sweet. That feels so good. This has a 45 degree throw, kind of AR style, ambi safeties, and the levers are really, really small.
got these HB Industries uh, extended thumb safeties. They feel really good. They just stick out a few millimeters more than the factory ones. Uh, you know, it was a set of them. The factory charging handle sticks out pretty far, easy to get a hold of, easy to charge the weapon. Um, I've thrown this Sig Romeo 5 red dot on it that I had laying around. You go to charge it and all of a sudden you're barking your knuckles on the optic mount. It would be even worse if I had a larger piece of hardware over here, scope rings or something like that. Only the shoe of it right here that's retained by these two roll pins. It's going to get replaced with this HB Industries one that has a downward cant to it. Um, and it's slightly extended as well. Big fan of this offset charging handle. Definitely gets your hand away from any um, optics mounts. This is the final configuration of the rifle for now. I think I have an extra Streamlight ProTac of some sort laying around that I'll throw on it. It's also set up with uh, QD points for my sling. And um, the final weight of this came out to 6 pounds, 14 ounces, which is about a pound heavier than my 13.9 inch pinned and welded AR-15. But it's by no means a heavy gun. Um, but to keep the weight down, I did go ahead and just throw a red dot on it for now. And, and um, I'll leave that on there for the foreseeable future, uh, unless there's something else I want to try on it. This thing runs like a sewing machine. The gas system upgrades made it shoot softer and the gas positions were easy to change with the tip of a 223 around. I ran M855 and M193 556 and those rounds were happiest on gas positions one and two, low gas and normal. I ran a bunch of steel case 223 and it like gas position three, which is the adverse position or the most gas. The gun shot very flat. The muzzle device actually seemed to push the muzzle down slightly with some loads. I think you can see it in the video. The controls and ergonomics are great, and the manual of arms is the same as an AR-15 for a right-handed shooter, which was nice and familiar. The HBI handguard did not get nearly as hot as the factory handguard. It also allowed my support hand to be further out for more control of the weapon, and the profile was much more comfortable in my hand. The gun was 100% reliable with three different types of ammo and three different magazine brands. I have about 400 rounds through it so far. I do not know why these firearms aren't more popular because they are just awesome.